Hi, this is Starkey Sowers. Welcome again to another PLUS program training series. Today's topic, genetically modified organisms or foods and organic foods, and this is part two. So we kind of went through a little bit on the beginning last time, and I'll probably rehearse you a little bit again. When we look at a genetically modified food, first of all, what is it? So ultimately what we do is we see scientists and different types of researchers uh, taking the DNA or the genetic profile of these particular foods and altering them. They might use bacteria, they might use virus, they might use all sorts of different types of um, DNA. They might even use um, actual animal pieces as well. So a lot of people have a little bit of concerns about it. So real quick, another bullet as to why people would want to do a GMO food. When we look at the, the board here, we see a couple different things. Number one, we see the, the use of GMOs actually decreases the cost of uh, the produce, obviously making it a little bit more affordable. The other thing that we see as well too is increasing the uh, crop to be able to be resistant, so to speak, to pesticide use. So one of the things that we know is when they use different types of pesticides and herbicides, uh, certain types of GMO crops are actually resilient to it. So one of the things that happens with that is it actually allows it to grow and be in a position where it doesn't get affected by the pesticide or herbicide. Typically, a uh, use would be like a, a component like Roundup, and Roundup's kind of an interesting component. A lot of times we use that around the, the yard and around the house. Well, these uh, particular types of uh, organisms are actually uh, resilient to it. So the other thing, of course, might be for nutritional. We might increase like maybe a vitamin content or might be able to grow in a, a specific area a little bit more effectively. All right, so one of the things that we look at is one of the ways to avoid it. So when we look at avoidance of genetically modified foods, the United States Department of Agriculture back in 1997 started considering a lot of the people's concerns about it. When we look at it, as of 2002, we actually see that there was an approved national campaign for United States Department of Agriculture when it comes to organic standards. And so what does it mean to be organic? A couple of unique things. Number one, when you grow in an organic field, the first thing, you can't use any type of synthetic pesticides or any type of herbicides or anything of that nature. The other thing is you can't use sewage. And I know that seems a little bit stark, so to speak, but one of the things that happened for years is you could use different types of human nitrates and uh, pour that back actually into specific uh, types of crops and fields. The other thing that happens too is uh, when it comes to different types of animal products and so when it comes to meats or it comes to milk or anything of that nature, no pesticides can be used as well as no antibiotics and no hormones. And so for a lot of people, that was a huge advantage and so we've seen that particular program grow exceptionally well throughout the last couple of years. Uh, one of the things when you look at it, a huge concern that's going on right now is a lot of people not only concerned about the pesticides, but also about potential allergens. All right. So how would you find these particular types of foods when we look at um, organic foods? So one of the things that we look at is this is specifically um, the United States Department of Agriculture has three different seals that they have available. First of all, one's called 100% organic. And indeed, that would be 100% organic. So looking um, at the, the board here, we see not only use of 100% organic, but we also see the USDA organic. So when we see the USDA organic, that actually indicates it would be 95% organic. And a lot of times people say, well, why wouldn't it be 100%? Well, that extra 5% oftentimes allows for different types of additives to be in there. Might be vitamins and minerals or something really simple, but it gives them a little bit of leeway. Mind you, the whole product, 95% it, still gonna be uh, organic content. And then finally, made with organic ingredients. So when we look at this particular seal, what it means is a lot of the in ingredients oftentimes aren't available in inorganic. So it gives the manufacturer specifically of uh, what we call packaged foods a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier ability to make a food with some items that might not be available. So ultimately, the other thing to remember too is 70% organic means, of course, there's not going to be any GMOs at all. Any type of product that is grown organically has no GMOs. So when we look at this made with organic ingredients, the other 30% cannot be genetically modified organisms as well. All right, so then we finally look at the third party seal. The third party seal has really grown in huge acceptance in the last uh, couple of years. And what, what we know about this third party seal is this, is actually there's an audit trail. Somebody actually comes in, looks at the whole buying, purchasing, as well as the growing and the manufacturing and the end product guaranteeing that there is 100% no GMO foods that were used in the process. The United States Department of Agriculture seal is probably just as stringent, but a lot of times they don't go onto the facilities uh, on a regular basis and guarantee the whole processing. So when you look at the GMO verified project, this one's gonna be just another insurance, so to speak, that that has occurred. 
So finally, you might ask, well, what about fruits and vegetables? So when we go into the grocery store, one of the things that we uh, have a tendency to want to know is, you know, whether the, the produce that we're buying is actually going to have some of these compounds. So looking at the numbers here, it's very unique. Um, when we look at a typical fruit, we actually see a lot of times there's a little bit of a code on it. It's like a little bit of a seal, and that's prob probably what we call part of the COOL program, which is country of origin. It'll tell you what country it was grown at. And so then what you'll see is a couple different digit systems. Number one, there might be a four digit system. And if it starts with the numeral four, then we actually know that that's a conventional product and that very well could have you know, typical types of pesticides and herbicides and things of that nature. So then the other one is if it's a five digit system and it starts with a nine, then we actually know that that is actually an organic and a non-GMO product. So, and then finally, the last one is a five digit system as well. And it actually starts with an eight. And that actually shows that that would be a GMO or genetically modified product. So kind of gives you a quick reference, looking uh, at the chart here, kind of gives us some good information to be able to have a quick pulse going into the grocery store to know the difference. So this kind of wraps up the series on genetically modified uh, organisms and foods and organic foods. This is Starkey Sowers. We appreciate you watching another Plus Program training series.